Welcome to The Scoop. I'm Diego Cortez. We've had Ben Lamb with us, and he is heading into the main event final table with a lot of chips, and he's also had an incredible year. He's leading the World Series of Poker Player of the Year. He's up there in the Card Player Player of the Year, so we're going to talk about all of that, the main event, his bracelet win, his cash games, and if you missed part one, it's on Card Player TV. Speaking of this summer, um, you won a bracelet in PLO. Like I said, you had other final tables. You were a final table of 50K horse, and you've had success over the over the previous years too, but was there anything in particular that, was it a matter of just really running well, or was there anything in particular that you specifically changed in your game or focused in your game or um well i didn't i didn't drink it all this summer and, and in past summers you know like i think if i like you know got, when i got second to sam stein i would have spent like the next two days like going out and having a good time and and uh versus just getting in the next tournament like after the 10k plo i, I immediately registered for the 10k six max there's like i took an hour break mm -hmm. and registered the 10k six max and, and you know went deep in that too so um you know, I, I, obviously I ran amazing this summer, but you know, I was more prepared for a big summer because, um, you know, after, you know, wins, I, I didn't go out and have fun or anything. I just kind of went to sleep and uh, I got back and played the next day. I think I took two days off the entire summer. I mean, I read in the ESPN article just kind of in preparation for meeting you where they really emphasize that, that you, you know, that you were known as a fun-loving <laughs> partier. It, I, I almost felt like they went overboard with it, like making you sound like, I mean, it was, it, it'd be impossible for you to be playing as much as you are and having success if the way they made it sound as if you were out every night, you know, partying <laughs> up with these guys. But they made a big deal as if the fact that you just disciplined yourself and not drank, you know, had had like this immediate impact. But maybe they weren't exaggerating that much. It really did uh, help your focus at least. I mean, it's it's not like, you know, I had a problem or anything. <laughs> well, they made it sound <laughs> almost like you were like a big problem, like the number one partier in, uh, in no, poker. I don't think that's true, but but you know, if if you're playing like a, it's it's more of a distraction, you know. Like during the summer, all your friends are in town, and you're playing like a big cash game, and they're all want to go out and have a good time, and it's like, yeah. well, if I don't drink, then I'm not gonna ever want to go to the club. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like you don't right. want to go to the club and just sit there, so. <laughs> So, you know, if I put the restriction that I don't drink on for the summer, I'm just going to play a lot more hours. Mm -hmm. And that was, like, the, my main consideration is I would just be, uh, you know, playing a lot more. Has that carried over now, naturally, after you made the final table, you probably celebrated, but <laughs> has that carried over to where now you're playing and, and working the cash games and partying less than you did in the past in, in your career? I mean, yeah, I mean, I still, you know, I still have fun. I, I made some bets at the beginning of the summer uh, that I wasn't going to drink a single drop of alcohol uh, the whole summer, and I didn't bet a lot, but I bet five of my friends uh, 500 bucks each, and I made them pay me up front. Right. So, you know, I, I was the escrow, so it, it basically cost me $5,000 if I drank, and uh, the bet was I, I wouldn't drink until I busted the main event, and, you know, I, my horse won a bracelet, I won a bracelet. I got heads up with, you know, one of my best friends, and I didn't didn't drink at all. And I made the final table, so <laughs> right. I, I, I did lose the bet after standing. the final table. I yeah. mean, but since then, has it been more of a lifestyle change almost in terms of um, just more time at the tables and more focus, or was that just like a special special effort for the World Series? I mean, mostly, you know, it was a special effort for the World Series, but, you know, in the past, I, I feel like I've kind of squandered some, some opportunities when uh, when I could have made a lot of money. and. You know, I, I had money and I didn't really want to work. I just want to have fun, and uh, you know, it's, uh, it's the games are getting tougher. So, you know, while while I am able to make a lot of money playing, I, I do want to do that, and then you know, eventually in the next five years, maybe move on to something uh, different outside of poker. I mean, I'm always going to play poker, but you know, uh, at least right. not be totally dependent on. on Correct. The you know, the, the swings are kind of uh, <laughs> kind of brutal sometimes. So, you know, it'd be nice to if I'm losing, like have. The ability to step out and, and you know work on a business of some sort. It's funny to hear you say that, where you've had as much success as anybody over the last year or so, both in tournaments and cash mm -hmm. games. But even you're sensitive to the swings and to the to the uncertainties. I mean, you were you actually had a lot of success online, and now of course the online games have you know have shrunk and and disappeared for to a large extent. At least you were able to make the transition in terms of live play. But um, you just never know what what's around the corner. And even the live games, they've been uh, been running regularly, but not to the degree that they were a couple of years ago when they were gigantic, mm -hmm. maybe too gigantic. You mentioned playing against Sam Stein. 
uh, that was your first place that you won in, in Pilo this summer. No, oh, no, no, you, so first you were a runner up and then you won, uh, a Pilo bracelet after that. Yeah. So playing, I mean, playing your friend, I assume you'd spent a lot of time discussing just theory or strategy about PLO in the past with each other. Was it, was it strange to play or to, were there like multiple levels going on where you thought back to discussions you'd had or, or analyses um, that you'd shared? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of weird because I, I think I kind of like taught him how to play PLO. Like when we met, he didn't really play PLO and, uh, he only played No Limit and, mm-hmm. You know, we'd be playing big cash games, and like the people in the game would want to put PLO in the mix, and he'd play it, and he'd just play real tight, and so right. he kind of asked me some things, and I kind of taught him, and then <laughs> he'd have beat me. So I mean, that that was fun though, you know. I mean, it was fun getting heads up against him, and you know, he's a great player. So, were there ever any hands where you really were thinking in terms of things that you'd said to him at some point, and whether this was this fit into that framework, or whether he was considering what you? Set to <laughs> there was one hand he, he check raised a like a like a dry ace high flop that I, I thought looked a, a little suspicious like something I might have done and he'd seen me do so I ended up uh, I had a I had a big hand too though so when that not like I made a hero call or anything mm-hmm. but yeah a little bit I guess and you were right about your analysis in that yeah or, yeah he, he was he was bluffing now he's leading the card player player of the year you mentioned that the World Series player of the year wasn't a big deal to you if you do even reasonably well at the final table, you'll take over the card player player of the year too. Is that factoring into your thoughts at all? Not not that it's going to factor in at the final table because you're going to be trying to win or mm-hmm. do as well as you can, but like the rest of the year, would it impact playing more tournaments or anything like that for you? Probably not. I mean, I, w- I would guess that if like it was really close uh, in like December, I might play like two tournaments that I normally wouldn't play, but, but I'm not going to like travel to... The other side Atlantic of the world City to, to play any tournaments, yeah. uh, probably not Atlantic City, no. Uh, maybe LA, so as far as, <laughs> as far as I go. You know. but your main focus is on making money, mm-hmm. being successful, even more than the... I saw one quote about when you won the your bracelet in the PLO, that the bracelet lasts forever, and that it was a big deal to you, and certainly you're friends with a lot of players who have won bracelets, and they're probably kidding you to some degree that you had a lot of success and not not won the bracelet you never want to be in that group of like top players who haven't won the bracelet yet and people keep reminding you but notwithstanding what you said there it seems like you're more of a bottom line professional yeah i mean people get in this game they they play this game and it's it's your job you play to make money um so you know you get a bracelet it's cool and all in 20 years from you know now if, if i have that money or i don't I still have the race, it'll be kind of cool, you know. But, you know, it really is about, about you know, making money for me, and, and uh, so that's it's what I'm going to keep trying to do. I mean, in the context of the final table that's coming up, obviously without getting into any specifics, because you'll adapt to, to what you see and to what you feel at the final table, but is it more of just maximizing and doing the best that you can as opposed to the glory of winning and, and being the champion. I know some players who have said going in that to win and to be a world champion and to be a part of history forever and to have their their picture up there is such a big deal that they're almost going in to win or, or nothing. And some of them have taken huge risks just in that pursuit. But um, it sounds to me like for you, you'll go in and you're going to do as best as you can and maximize your equity, but that the glory of being Ben Lamb champion <laughs> is not high on your priority list. No, I mean, that's not like a, an overwhelming concern of mine. It, you know, it would be cool to win, you know, th- this tournament, you know, above all other tournaments. It's just, it's like the one tournament that would be like really cool to win. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'm not, not going to make it, you know, affect any decisions. And uh, if this is last year, you know, winning the tournament would be worth a lot more than, than second place. But now it's, it's, you know, it's pretty close. That's another, another thing that's changed a lot where... Mm-hmm before there was so much ancillary income and the, the money that you can make in terms of sponsorships for winning are so huge that it really was worth gambling and, and winning, whereas now it's maybe back to the difference between first place and second place money more so than in the past. Yeah, I mean, it used to be, you know, an extra like eight or eight million to five, five to eight million uh, in bonuses mm-hmm. and stuff over the course of 10 years if, if you played it right. And now, you know, that's kind of dried up. That doesn't really exist. Uh, you know, maybe if online poker ever came back in the next two or three years, it would, but... It could be a bad beat. Not that it would ever be 
unfortunate to win the main event or to get really deep in the main event, but it could be a bad beat where years ago there was one year when Huxseed won it that was the only year it wasn't televised, and I always thought that was a terrible beat. And now this could be the one year where, because we're in this interim period where online poker is really down, that the big extra compensation is just not there and it might be back in a year or two, like you say. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. You'll, still be, you'll still be happy to, to go deep. <laughs> <laughs> First place money is enough. So, um, or even second or third wouldn't be sure. terrible. So it sounds like you've, you've deferred a lot of your preparation. Do you, do you have any friends or other players who you're going to be at least just talking to or thinking in terms of, of strategy or is, is it more just your own, your it, own counsel? It's just going to be my own basically. You know, I, the people that are at the final table I've, I've played a lot with and in this environment and, um, you know, this tournament more than any other people play a lot differently. Like, um, it really brings out a different type of per- player mm-hmm. in, in each, in each person. So, you know, if, uh, if one of my friends has played with one of them and, and thinks they're going to play one way, I think I actually know better how they might play at the final table. So, you know, I probably won't talk too much to, to anyone about, about how everyone's going to play. I'll just try to, you know, think about it a lot and uh, try to formulate some, some theories on, on how they're going to play and mm-hmm. why not, you know. And no matter, no matter what you formulate, when they show up, they may surprise you because mm-hmm. people you think are going to be really tight, try to move up the ladder, all of a sudden are playing aggressively I think of like when Jerry Yang won he'd been just kind of climbing climbing the ladder everyone thought that he's just trying to move up a few spots and he came in very aggressively and other times people thought this guy's going to play to win and they come in and they're just playing very very carefully or very uh, conservatively so it's almost like you don't even know how they'll play until they're actually under the lights yeah, I've actually never watched uh like TV poker very much, so I actually am gonna go back and watch like the last three final tables because mm-hmm. I haven't even seen them. Even the one I went deep and I didn't, I didn't really watch, so um, I definitely want to see like you know how they played. I think they'll give me some insight on you know how it kind of all works out. Well, you sound very confident, very prepared. I have no doubt that at this point, not that it's a free roll because there's so much money at stake, mm-hmm. but when you've had a great year like you've had and you're also playing the cash games every day and doing well. You're just gonna go in and probably play your best, which is all you can, all you yeah, can ask for. Yeah, I can, I can ask to to get lucky too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you will too. So thanks for coming by, and mm-hmm. uh, good luck to you. We'll all be watching when this airs. It'll be right when the main event's going on, so it'll be interesting just to see uh, see how it goes for you. Right. Definitely, you and Phil Collins are probably the two best known players, and um, probably be the most interesting to watch. So I look forward to that. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on The Scoop.